All right, welcome to the Social Media for Real Estate Agents podcast, where we find rock stars in social media and get them to show us realtors how we can use social media to increase our business. I'm Khaled Nathan Alim, the real estate boy. I'm a licensed real estate agent in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And my guest today, and please forgive me if I said your name wrong, but Levy Vasek? <laughs> that was way off. That was way off. <laughs> That's uh, Levi Levi Lassick. Lassick, 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 Levi. That was very sorry. Well, listen, this <laughs> guy probably, is... I should have asked that before you started the podcast. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> listen, this guy is a certified YouTube rock star, man. He has a page, um, a, a YouTube channel called Living in Dallas, Texas, has close to 9,000 subscribers actually made or uh, did $43 million in business just from YouTube in 2021 and was also featured in the second edition of YouTube Secrets. And he's the co-founder of The Real Agents. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Thank you, my man. Thanks for having me. Cool, 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 man. Well, listen, um, like I said, we brought you on here because I saw you doing numbers um and i've seen you speak a couple times and i definitely wanted to have you um on this podcast to kind of walk us realtors through how we can use social media or even youtube to increase our business so my first question is why youtube oh well if you are a real estate agent and you have at least one or more years left in your career you should absolutely be on youtube <laughs> And I, I mean, there, why not YouTube? I mean, it, ultimately the creators that I see uh, as far as real estate content creators, the most successful ones are all dialed in on one platform primarily, and they have presence on the other platforms. So maybe YouTube's not the answer for you, but it's definitely the answer for us. But ultimately I researched all the different platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is where I went first because I wanted to dial in a hundred percent on one platform uh, going into 2021, and all the noise was around the the main three platforms. Actually, YouTube wasn't even a consideration in the beginning, but as I dug through the other platforms, it just they didn't really sit well with me as far as in my gut. Nothing really seemed to resonate as far as okay, I think I, I see a path here to generating some business and generating business quickly. But whenever I dug in more into YouTube and it was really the YouTube secrets book that kind of launched that journey for me, because anytime I start researching a subject, I always look at books first. I get into books and then from books, I get into YouTube videos, Google blogs, and whatever else, what other information I can find. Well, YouTube secrets, uh, the co-author Benji Travis in there talked about, uh, he had a real estate channel over 10 years ago and he was a struggling real estate agent uh, doing 10 deals a year. And then uh, because he had a YouTube channel, think about that, a YouTube channel back in 2009 uh, based on real estate, it landed him the HUD account. Actually, HUD reached out to him, gave him all of their listings in the Pacific Northwest. And then he went to doing over 100 home sales a year. And so, you know, just from that, that's kind of what sparked my interest. And so then I was like, OK, well, maybe there's something on YouTube. And then I just started to research the platform more and more. And as I dug in more and more, I started to find that, you know, people are searching on YouTube. It's the second world, uh, world's second largest search engine next to Google. And of course, Google owns YouTube. So their search goes hand in hand. Ultimately, if you search on Google this day and age, usually on the first page, there's a whole section dedicated to YouTube videos. You scroll about halfway down, you'll see YouTube videos. If you click on videos on a Google search, it'll be all YouTube videos. If you click on images on a Google search, half of those images will be YouTube thumbnails. So Google is heavily promoting to YouTube. On top of that, what I love about catching people in the research phase, which people are researching on YouTube, uh, nobody really goes to Facebook and says, hey, honey, it's time to buy a house. Let's go see what we can find on the market on Facebook. You know, I don't think anybody ever really says, hey, honey, it's time to buy a house. Let's go on Instagram and see if we can find the real estate agent with the coolest profile posting market mm -hmm. reports. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think people say, hey, honey, it's time to buy a house. Let's go on TikTok and try to find the best dancing real estate agent. Now, you can have presence on those platforms. And I'm not trying, I'm not trying to knock those platforms. And I know several agents that are very, very successful on those platforms. I'm just saying that um, those are interruption platforms. And so people may find you on there, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're in the market for a home 
at that moment. They may love you, love your brand and follow you, but they could be six months, nine months, 18 months away from buying or selling a home. And because, again, as I mentioned, most people, most people are not going to those platforms to research uh, their next home purchase or sell. Right. So from that standpoint, people are going to YouTube and they are searching for that information because they have to make a move or they need to sell their house and they're looking for answers. And ultimately, what I really love about YouTube is we are capturing people in the research phase, and that is before they've even considered hiring a real estate agent. So we are getting them up front. So most of the time uh, when people go on these other platforms or whenever they post content about the appraisal process or the lending process or the title process or the escrow process, you know, those people are already under contract with somebody else. You're capturing them after the fact. So we make content uh, beforehand that captures people in the research phase. And again, they haven't even considered hiring a real estate agent. So whenever they find our videos, then what happens is, is they start to develop a relationship with you because if you have the library built up and they can consume multiple videos, which YouTube, to me, in my opinion, is the most content creator uh, friendly platform out there because their number one goal is time on platform. And if you watch one YouTube video, then YouTube is more likely to serve up your next video to that person because they assume they're going to watch another one of your videos. It's the same reason whenever you log into uh, YouTube and you made the mistake of watching one cat video. And now every time you log into YouTube, all you see is cat videos. It's because they're like, hey, you know, this guy watched one cat video. So let's right. let's serve him up a hundred more cat videos because the, they think you're likely to watch those. Well, if somebody watches one real estate video on Dallas, Texas, Guess what YouTube's right. going to do? They're going to be like, well, Levi has a, a ton of videos on Dallas, Texas. So let's keep feeding them more videos because they don't necessarily care about the content YouTube. They care about if the viewer loves the content and if the viewer loves the content, which they prove that through view duration, then that's going to trigger YouTube to say, hey, let's continue to feed more of this creator's content to this person because we know they're consuming it. We know they're going to consume it. They're likely to consume future content. And then we can display more ads and ultimately make more money. And we get a share in that ad revenue with YouTube. I don't know any other platform that actually pays you uh, in the or shares ad revenue with you. So we were paid last year. You know, ultimately, uh, YouTube, what I really love about it and the number one reason why I believe you, especially as a real estate agent, should be on the platform is because YouTube does not take you time. YouTube makes you time. Not only does it make you time, it compounds your time. And the reason right. I say that is because our channel last year in 2021 was viewed, it was consumed 66,600 watch hours. Well, if you mm -hmm. divide that by 24 hours in a day, that is equivalent to 7.6 years, which means our channel prospected for us an entire 7.6 years within a one year time frame. So you tell me, how is any agent going to compete with us whenever our channel is is prospecting for us 24-7 nonstop? Not just 24-7, it's actually prospecting for us. Uh, one day we had 3 399 watch hours. That's equivalent to 16 days. Now, wow. we don't average that every day, but let's say I believe the average for our channel is 10 days for every day. So we gain 10 days of complete prospecting every day. So how is any agent going to ever compete with us if they're making calls for two hours a day, if they're door knocking for two hours a day, if they're sending out one round of postcards or they're placing one magazine ad out there or even one billboard, you know, our videos are gaining us 10 days every single day. And so therefore it doesn't matter I can go on vacation. I can go to the conferences and speak, you know, where I've met you before. And our channel is still prospecting. It's still turning out leads. We're still getting phone calls. It doesn't matter because those videos are working for me nonstop. So as I mentioned before, maybe YouTube is not for you, but ultimately video should be for everybody because all video is, is sales at scale, right? And so um, it's sales and community. Uh, James says it's communication it's at scale, right? Uh, I say it's, right. it's sales at scale. And so you have the choice. As a real estate agent, you can continually sell one-on-one, -on -one, which means you can take one client out to that neighborhood and you can tell all the stories about that neighborhood and everything that's great about it. And whenever that client leaves, that conversation dies, right? That, that conversation lives and dies with that one client. Now, what you can right. do is you can get on video 
and you can tell that exact same story and everything you did for that client, but do it on video. And now you can reach 10 people, a hundred people, a thousand people, maybe a hundred thousand people. And that's how you scale yourself. And that's how you reach more clients. You know, um, they say real estate's a relationship game. Well, we build relationships. We just do it through video. We put all the value and all the content out there and we let people choose to watch our videos on their own. We don't have to push anything towards them or pay for ads. Uh, that's the other great thing about YouTube is YouTube wants to find your audience. So everything we did last year was um, a zero advertising budget. We didn't spend a penny on marketing, not a single uh, penny to push out our videos or anything. We let the, the YouTube algorithm find our audience for us. And therefore, people consume the content, found it valuable. They developed a relationship with us. And so whenever they call us, they've already made the decision that they want to work with us. That's completely different. And I tell you what, it's a game changer. We, at, we actually gained 690 leads from our channel last year. That is two per day. Can you imagine what your business would be like if you had two people calling you every day um, to want to work with you versus you making a hundred phone calls, just trying to get two people to say that they might work with you, you know, 10 months down the road when they're ready to buy or sell. It's completely different ball game. And I can't tell you how much it, I mean, it's absolutely changed our lives and our business. And, you know, there's all we're looking is how do we scale this more and more and more? Because, uh, you know, we didn't do we didn't do any outbound marketing last year. We didn't call anybody. We didn't door knock anybody. We didn't shake hands. We didn't kiss babies. I mean, my neighbors, my neighbors listed their house. They didn't even know. They don't even know I'm a real estate agent because wow. I'm not I'm not chasing them down. They're they're really not my target market. I mean, would I love to have sold their house? Yes. But you know what? I, I have a little thing about working with friends and family. It, it's all mm. fun. It's all fun and games until something goes wrong. And then and then guess who gets all the blame, right? So uh, for me, I, I'm not, I, I really don't really want to work with my friends and family. Uh, so I prefer to keep it this way to where, you know, most of them hardly even know I'm a real estate agent. And we attract all of our business for people that want to work with us. And they ha already have the relationship in place. And it becomes all about the transaction as well with them. I mean, these people moving here, want to find a house they and they want to do it quickly our average contact to under contract was 50 days last year wow. so these people were moving quickly as soon as they reached out to us on average for every deal we did last year it took us 50 days to get them under contract that's moving pretty quickly you know so overall that's just a couple of the highlights i could keep going on and on about why okay. you should use youtube but uh i'll uh, i'll take a breath here and, and <laughs> Let you take back over there. Sorry. <laughs> cool. No, nah, no worries. No worries, man. That was a lot of information, man. So 43 million in 2001. What did your business look like in 2020? Zero. Zero. Okay. So, I mean, let me ask like this. Were you in the business at that time? And if so, what were you, or you just joined and or you just became a realtor in, in 2021? Yeah, my partner and I, brand new real estate agents, brand new, let me say it th this way, brand new licensed real estate agents. So uh, now Travis, my partner, and uh, absolutely amazing, couldn't have done that much business without him. He, uh, he owned a digital marketing agency for the last five years, and he helped agents in the real estate space. So he ran Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, all that stuff everything mm -hmm. except YouTube. And so, uh, but he knew the challenges and struggles. He also knew what agents pay every month to run Facebook ads. And he also knows right. that Facebook ads are crap, right? They convert it right. probably 1%, 2% at the most. You have to chase everybody down still. They don't really know you. And right. it takes the average conversion cycle about nine months uh, to convert those leads as well. But he done that for the last five years. So he was familiar with real estate marketing. I ran a financial services business for the last five years and was doing extremely well, but I had contracts with all of the schools in Dallas ISD. And of course they all shut down in 2020. So uh, I had, I had, I've invested in property since 2009. I was a part-time mm -hmm. investor. I did one, maybe two fixer flips uh, each year. And I had seven rental properties at one time. I always worked with a real estate agent but I never wanted to be a real estate agent because I never wanted to do what they have to do their first two or three years in business, right? So um, that's the one thing I've always loved real estate. 
but I was just never interested in being a real estate agent because of the struggle that I know they all go through because I have very successful friends in real estate, but I know what they went through the first two or three years trying to establish themselves and their brand and everything else. And that was just something I wasn't interested in. Well, when my business shut down in 2020, you know, I knew I needed to make a transition and I, I didn't want to you know, really get back into financial services. So I thought, okay, here's the opportunity to, I, you know, I was like, well, I guess I'm going to move into real estate, but I didn't want to, because again, I was faced with, I do not want to cold call door knock, you know, buy a bunch of postcards, get a billboard, mm -hmm. post in magazine ads. I mean, go around, try to network. It's, I was like, how do I, how am I going to break into this market? Especially when there's so there's 15,000 agents in Dallas. So how am I going to even make a dent or be known or compete with the next person? And so I was just patient. I was completely patient over that summer of 2020 during the lockdowns and everything. I just, I studied and studied and studied and researched and figured out how am I going to do this? Going back to the original part, whenever I said I went down the path of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok mm. first, researching all those platforms and none of them set well with me. And, and so YouTube was the last choice, uh, but that's what really kind of resonated with me. And then I, because I knew going into it, and the reason I was patient researching was because um, a mentor of mine said, it's not the best real estate agent that wins. It's the best marketer. And so mm. I knew I needed to approach this as a business owner and as a marketer, not as a real estate agent. You see most people, most agents where they make the mistake is they come in, to real estate, to be a real estate agent and to sell homes. I came in to be a real estate business owner and to market homes. Mm -hmm. And that's a big difference. You see, if you're familiar with the cash flow quadrant, uh, yes. which, you know, the left side of the quadrant is an employee. You trade time for money. Well, right. real estate agents don't want to be employees, so they get a real estate license. But the problem is, is that all they do is they move up on the left hand side to the self-employed right. column. So they're still trading time for money it's just their own time for, for the money. Right. And then if you don't, or if you don't do that quickly, you're going to be out of business, which is why 87% of agents fell within the first two years. So as long as you're a solo real estate agent and everything is dependent on you, you're going to be in that left side of the quadrant. You're going to be self-employed. The only way to get to the right side to become a business owner is you have to leverage yourself. You have to either establish a team so that you earn a little bit off of all of your agents, or you develop a, a, a marketing plan to where you lead generate 24 seven, because until you learn how to lead generate in your sleep, you'll always have a job. If your lead generation is dependent on you, then you're going to struggle when you go on vacation. Your, your spouse is going to hate you because you're thinking about how far you're getting behind being on vacation instead of enjoying your time. Right? So if you're lead generating in your sleep, which Warren Buffett says, you'll never be rich until you can make money in your sleep. Well, you'll never have a business until you can lead generate in your sleep. And so moving over to the right side of the quadrant, you either start to build a team or you have a very significant marketing plan in place that is constantly generating business. And then ultimately, you know, the 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 most coveted quadrant is the investor quadrant, the I quadrant. Well, why is that? Because then your money can make you money and you're not dependent upon people necessarily. It's just like you've got enough capital that you can invest it and make more money. But they say time is the most valuable asset. Well, if that's the case, why would you not invest your time into something that can get you that can compound your time? And so I, I say that most people, your number one question when you invest money, whether you buy real estate, stocks, crypto, NFTs, whatever it may be, your number one question is usually, what is my return? What am I going to get back? How, how long is it going to take me to get my money back? How, you know, when am I going to be profitable? You ask those questions, but whenever you do a task or invest your time into something, are you asking that same question? What is this going to return to me in my time? And just as I shared earlier, you know, our channel prospected 7.6 years for us inside of one year. That is a compound effect. That is a compound return on your time. And I don't know anything else or any other platform that'll do that for you other than YouTube. Yeah, no facts, big facts, big facts. Um, looking at your bio and um listening to you like you said you were successful already and you 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 had some hand in in real estate now did you start out with this partner from day one because i was watching um think media and the um i forgot what the guy's name is but he um he spoke about you yeah and i guess he's he's uh, one of your your uh, mentors correct yes 
Okay. So did you go through his course as far as, is that where you learned as far as the YouTube strategy or was he kind of after you had already kind of blown up per se? No, Sean Cannell was the, he's the co-author of YouTube secrets with Benji okay. Travis. So their book was, that book was what kind of really started the journey. Um, okay. I did not, I did not take one of Sean's courses, although he had a special over Christmas and I bought a couple of his courses. I still have yet to go through them, but I do plan to go through them just uh, just for the fact that I'm a, I'm a constant student of the game and I do want to see what he teaches on there. But uh, ultimately, no, I pieced everything together that Sean and Benji, their book just really kind of sparked the, the thought process for me. And so therefore I went on to YouTube and started to research. I bought a, uh, uh, other YouTube books. There's there's seven or eight, maybe nine different marketing books. I mean, probably more than that, but I think that's where I mm -hmm. stopped was around the eight or nine mark. But most of them are not that great. Um, YouTube Secrets by Sean and Benji, that's the best book. And then YouTube Formula by Daryl Eves, that's the, those two books are really the only two books I recommend. Everything else out there was really pretty basic. Uh, you know, I would say not as helpful. I, I did a lot of research on YouTube. So I found real estate channels that were successful, ones that weren't. I found creator mm -hmm. channels that were successful, then ones that weren't. And of course, like Think Media, you know, that opened me up to other people that teach YouTube. I mean, there's so many channels on YouTube that teach YouTube. And, and to me, that's really the a very important part is you want to understand the platform first and then, and then understand how to apply it to real estate. And I think that's where most real estate agents make mistake is they dabble on these platforms. They never take the time to understand the back ends or the analytics or the data or anything that goes into it. And so they're right. always looking at it mainly from a consumer side versus a producer side. Mm -hmm. So that is a big difference. I, I, I figured that I had to uh, understand the platform from a producer side. And so that's why I spent so much time researching the platform first, then researching how could I apply it to real estate and how could I attract clients? And ultimately that was it. The number one goal was, can we make the phone ring? That was my only question to myself was, you know, can we make the phone ring? So mm -hmm. that was the, uh, that was the big question. Now I started out the channel. Uh, I mean, I initially had brought uh, somebody in to, to work with because I did want to partner from the beginning and we worked on a couple of things together, but it didn't really work out. And so I kind of broke out on my own for a month or two there, really creating all the content. I mean, for the first three months, just went on a tear as much as possible, created as much mm -hmm. content as I could. And then uh, whenever I met Travis, that was really at the time I was uh, transitioning. The, the business was really starting to kind of come in. And uh, Travis, which we had met through mutual friends a few months before that, really came into the picture. He was looking to, to get help on starting a channel and, and ultimately just kind of mentioned one time, he's like, man, I wish we could partner up. And that kind of sparked everything. That was kind of like, I was like, well, I am, I'm looking for a partner. And then, and then Travis, you know, one of his, his opening lines to me or not opening lines, but one of the things he said, he probably didn't realize he said it, but he was like, I want to sell a hundred homes in a year. And, uh, mm -hmm. that's when I knew I was like, Oh, I think, I think this is the guy I want to partner with because I was really looking at I wanted to focus on the marketing side and the content creation. And I knew mm -hmm. that it would become a challenge as business came in to be able to handle that business on top of create content, especially at the scale that I wanted to do it at. Just like the same thing for, for Travis to sell a hundred homes in, the, in a year. That's a lot. And if you have to market and prospect on top of that, it's going to be an extreme challenge to, to do that. Right. You, you start to run a fine line of being able to uh, work everything on your own, just like me creating content and continually creating content at the level I'm doing it. If I had to stop and show homes three, four or five days a week, it would it would seriously put a damper in my content schedule. Right. So. I understood that it was going to be best for a partnership there, but we worked together for a couple of months, just kind of, uh, you know, filling each other out for at first, um, you know, kind of like the trust, but verify type situation where it's like, Hey, mm -hmm. let's make sure we're both who we are and who we say we are. And so, you know, after a few months though, we started cranking out some deals and, you know, everything just started, uh, you know, going really well. And so that's whenever we made the decision to, you know, officially partner, about halfway through last year, you know, in 2021, just officially partner up. And, you know, that's what, and then after that, it was kind of like, 
you know, the ease was there for us to just move forward. And, and man, we just crushed it after that. The last six months of last year was uh, bananas. And this month already, I mean, look, it's February 8th. So you're talking about mm. five, five weeks into the new year. Uh, we've already got 40 contracts pending already. <laughs> That's great. Now I got two questions. Okay. Number one, because a lot of agents that I run into, they don't want to partner because it's like, okay, now are you guys splitting 50 50 or is this some type of structure where everybody has a role? For example, you do the media and he does the showings or I guess, how does that work? It's both. Yeah. I mean, we, we have specific roles, but we're 50 50. I mean, I think for a true partnership to work, I mean, you both got to have equally vested interest, right? right. So, right. so, it, it probably, you know, if, if you're 60, 40 or anything like that, there's, mm -hmm. there's going to resentments going to fester down the road at some point, Thanks. you know? Right. And so you have to have an even partnership, but also you have to have an uh, understanding of, of who does what and what are our skills. And I think for, I, well, I don't think I know for Travis and myself, we have, we're, we're completely different skill sets. We're very similar in a lot of things, but as far as our mm -hmm. strengths, you know, very different. And, you know, like I said, he wanted to sell a hundred homes, which is right. you, you got to, you know, it's always best to work with somebody that wants to do something. Right? right. So I didn't have to convince him of that. He doesn't have to convince me of creating content. I, I mm -hmm. want to create content. So with that type of partnership that allows me to focus on that completely, it allows him to focus right. on that completely. So yes. Now, um, you know, Travis wanted to also create content, but also, you know, as the sales grew, you know, again, there's a fine line. He realized that his, the balance for time is very delicate, you could say. Right. So, but now in the last six months, I mean, he hasn't, in the last six months, he hasn't had to create content. He hasn't had, he hasn't had, uh, have to prospect and he's doing more deals than ever. The team's doing more deals than ever because, because the content stays consistent. And I don't have to show homes. Now, there's been a couple of uh, seven figure clients that have requested myself, but, you know, I may show up or meet them at a property or something like that. But ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, Travis can still handle that. And, you know, because of the amount of business we have now, we had to bring on a team. And so we, we've scaled out a team now and they're all closing deals with all the leads that we get from YouTube. We even have a full time lead specialist now that her number one job is to intake all the leads and distribute them and make sure we have phone numbers and emails and, and their complete contacts. I mean, that's how busy it's gotten uh, from the YouTube channel. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. I wanted, my second question was um, when I first saw your channel, I think realtors, their instinct is to do what I did. We go through showings. So when we jump on YouTube, we'll take the camera and we're just doing the showings through the house. So we're taking a camera and walk through the house. So when I first watched your channel, it seemed like you did something totally different because you, you were outside the store and you were talking about the neighborhood. And then yep. you went to the house, but you didn't go in. You, you uh, filmed the area, you talked about the area, you talked about the grocery store and just information about the area. And you went past three or four homes but you didn't go in. I'm like, why isn't he going in the home? <laughs> so I said, okay, there must be a, a strategy here. So can you speak to that? Man, that's a great observation. And, and you're probably the first person that's ever, you know, brought that up because it's a, you know, it's a complete strategic uh, point because, you know, the thing is, is anybody can look inside any home on Realtor and Zillow and, and those other websites. And they do that. Uh, that it's the old Saturday Night Live joke, not the old one, but I think like two years ago, Saturday Night Live, you know, had this whole spoof on on how Zillow is like our the thirty and forty year old uh, porn, right? <laughs> like, uh, right. you know, it's like that's what thirty and forty year olds do. They sit on the couch or late at night in bed right. just looking at homes on Zillow and uh, right. showing their spouse. Oh, did you see this one? Did you see that one? Well. <laughs> They can do that all day, every day. But what they can't do is they on Zillow is they can't see the house next door and they can't see the mm. house across the street and they can't see that Whole Foods is literally right around the corner and they can't see that there's a badass community pool there uh, or there's a playground or an open field for the kids or there's biking trails. They can't see any of that on Zillow. 
So that's why I was never concerned about showing the inside of the home because there plus in Dallas, I mean, really in all the suburbs, all the homes look the same, right? <laughs> so, uh, okay. you know, it's not like uh, anything unique. And that's why we also encourage people that, that follow us and create channels. We encourage them not to do like home tours, because if you're doing home tours inside of $500,000 house, nobody cares. It looks like every other $500,000 house, you know, right. there's really nothing special about it. It really only works or resonates on YouTube if they're in the multi-million dollar range, because everybody's curious to see a video inside of a multi-million dollar house. So, um, but in our channel, we don't feature that. So it's just not something we've ever focused on, but time and time again, clients love that content and that's why we, we gain so much. And so, uh, but yeah, we, now we're about to break 10,000 subscribers. We're at, I think we're only about 200 away from breaking 10,000 subscribers right. and that's all been organic and and the channel now is is blown up more than ever now uh what do you use for that information because i mean us being with exp we have access to kb core which has like local logic which kind of tells you about the area around um tells you about neighborhoods but what do you use do you use anything or is all that like knowledge that you have of that area yeah, man, I lived in Dallas for 20 years, you know, so, uh, okay. so I, I know it, you know, and that's what I talk about. And that's what I, I don't think the other thing is, is I don't get into a lot of real estate stats. I talk about the neighborhoods and what are they mm. like? What are they? What are I? What do I don't like? What are what's good? What's bad about them? What what's the cool spots to eat there? What's the main strip where the restaurants and bars are? I mean, I, I talk about where I like to go um, growing up there. What did I do over here? What did I do over there? And I think that's what people are looking for. That's the, well, I think, I mean, I think our channel speaks for itself, you know, we're, right. we're, we're definitely, I can tell you guaranteed we're the fastest growing channel in Dallas. Um, hmm. And we may be the, one of the fastest growing real estate channels in the U S just because I, I believe we, we create content for the viewer period. I don't create content necessarily that I want to create. Everything is geared toward what is the viewer? What do they want to see? And what do I think will resonate with them? And so I put myself in their shoes every single day. And that's how I'm, I'm focusing on that content. Now, are you planning as far as to go to this neighborhood, this neighborhood on, on this day? Like, take me through your um, weekly schedule. Do you do one a week or what's your weekly schedule like? Uh, I mean, typically I've done pretty much three videos a week uh, ever since we started. Now I've scaled back on that a little bit because we are incorporating some team members now into the channel. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do that just to kind of uh, change things up, spice it up, but also prove that uh, through a business concept that everything was not dependent upon myself. And that is an ultimate leverage point, because if you can build a business or a lead generation platform that is not dependent on yourself as well, even as the content creator. So you, you see how I earlier I mentioned I'm not dependent on leads because they're coming in constantly, right? However, mm. those leads are coming in constantly because I'm constantly creating content. So mm. that's kind of a double-edged sword. So if I, I also wanted to create a system and a process to where I wouldn't have to be, uh, I wouldn't have to create content forever for the channel. I wanted other team members to contribute. I wanted to, the fact that if I want to go to Bora Bora for a month and mm. not make a video, well, then the team can handle that. Or actually it's to the point now where I could go anywhere in the world and probably throw up a green screen behind me and put a, you know, a Dallas skyline and I could make a video from my laptop and it would, everybody would think I'm in Dallas, you know? So uh, I, I've positioned it to where it's, it's, it's leveraged. Uh, I'm not, uh, it's not dependent upon me and that's a proven concept now, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, everything was very planned out. Everything's always been planned out. Everything I've done has been strategic. It's been through research. I, I, I haven't really guessed on a lot of things. So I've been very, very intentional about everything. If you treat YouTube like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. If you treat YouTube like mm -hmm. a business, it'll pay you like a business. So when I started the channel, I, I wrote out a business plan um, before starting. So every everything that I learned and everything I pieced together from YouTube videos and books and everything else, I developed a plan for myself. So whenever I started the YouTube channel, even though it was brand new for me, it didn't feel like I was doing something brand new because I had a plan. It's the whole reason you create business plans for your business. It's just that real estate agents don't do that. 
they don't follow right. business owner rules, right? They just come in and they're like, okay, uh, what do I do? Okay. I tell all my friends and family, I make an announcement that I'm a real estate agent now. And, I, and you know, uh, they're, they're supposed to magically come and let me buy or sell homes with them. I mean, that's just not the case. You know, I mean, you can sit on the phone and call people all day, every day. I mean, you can do all that crazy right. stuff, but like I said, I, I, and not that that doesn't work. It's effective, but as Mike would say, it's effective, but it's not efficient. So, right. you know, so that's the thing is I just, I understood those concepts, not to that degree, but I understood one-on-one um, -on -one sales, you know, one-to-one -one versus one-to-many. Uh, I just didn't understand how to apply that to real estate. So that's why I was patient. And that's really the two things that, that differenti differenti uh, differentiate me from your average starting real estate agent is I had patience to research and figure it out. And, be, and number two, because I approached it as a marketer, not as a uh, agent, as a single individual person dependent on one-to-one -one relationships to sell homes. Gotcha. Now, again, going back to your background, like you said, you, you were already successful and you had, um, you were in real estate as an investor. Um, you were, you got into the business, you had one partner kind of switched him out for another partner who, who has a, a marketing agency or, a, um, what's the word, a, 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 a not a not a marketing agency, but a social media agency. Yep. Um, speak if you could speak to the to the new realtor who they don't have a lot of money. They don't know anybody who has a um, social media marketing agency. They got a phone. <laughs> they they have a phone and an idea, and they're not in Dallas. Um, Dallas, I know, has a bunch of great communities, big communities. Um, a lot of new construction, um, but like a place like Philadelphia, like I'm in, there's not a lot of new construction. Um, every house looks different. There's a bunch of row houses. There's a lot of blight. I guess, what advice would you give them um, as far as to start on YouTube and just in, in general to go try to go down the same path that you've gone down? Well, hey, uh, yeah, first of all, if you, if you, I love the saying, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. So, nice. so that's where I would just challenge you. Cause actually I've heard this three times today. Now people say, well, I'm in this area. You're in Dallas, but I'm in this area. The second okay. you say, but, but I'm, you're, you're placing a, a limiting belief in right. you're, you're planting that. Right. So, so here's the thing. And, and Travis, even though he owned a digital marketing agency for the last five years, we didn't apply any of that really to YouTube. Um, he, he actually hasn't done that because he didn't want to, he was burned out. He was tired of running Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Google. he didn't. So he didn't want to bring any of that to the business. He was like, I just want to sell some homes. And so that was the position that he took was all right, let me bring you some people, you know, so you don't have to chase them down and you'll sell them. I'll bring them in. You sell them, you know, I mean, that was the relationship. So, so even though, so even though he had that background doesn't mean that we utilized everything that that was in place there. Uh, number two, I don't care where you're at. If you're, if you're not on video, you're not going to be found or, or you know, nobody can find you if you're not present on a platform. So, uh, and I love this example. So uh, a friend of mine, actually not a friend of mine, but the, um, our editor, who's now our, our primary lead intake specialist, Chrissy, who's been with me for, she's been with me for three years, but she's also been with us this entire year of building the channel uh, from scratch. Uh, she is now our, our lead specialist, our lead intake person, and uh, she manages a couple of other things for us now as well. Her husband, they live in Northwest Georgia. Northwest Georgia is no Dallas. It's no Atlanta. It's rural. It's rural area. They're small towns. I mean, mm -hmm. a town is called like Fort Oglethorpe, you know, oh, wow. and and it's not Lafayette. It's uh, Lafayette or something. They even pronounce Lafayette incorrectly there, but that's just <laughs> the way they say it. So it's all these little small towns. You have to drive like 30, 45 minutes to get to the next one. And it's not like metropolis in between. It is country in between. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes to each of these towns. Most of them have 20, 30, 40,000 person populations. He followed our lead, did everything that we did. Uh, he, so her husband got into real estate, what had a nursing background, medical background, zero sales experience. 
zero real estate experience, never invested in anything, got in, but he knew he was not going to cold call and door knock and do all that other stuff and just started making videos just like we did for Northwest Georgia. And he's already closed uh, a couple of deals, got two more under contract uh, in less than six months. Um, wow. Several deals closed, a couple of deals under contract and is working with 12 active clients right now. And it all is just a process. And the fact is, is he just made the videos, not the highest view counts that we get, but you know, not the traffic that we get. But I'm telling you, if you live in Northwest Georgia rule and you're, you know, closing two deals a month, making 20 K a month, let's say your average deal is 10,000. I mean, that's a big deal, right? So you don't have to do 10, 15, 20 deals like we're doing. But if you could do two or three deals a month, would that change your business? Would that impact your business? Would it uh, add to your business? Whatever the case may be, you know, YouTube does not have to be your primary lead source and, and be all of your business, but why would you, why not implement it? You know, why not implement it? And if you gain an extra two or three transactions a month, is it worth it? Right, right, right. Definitely. Now you have a uh, mentorship, correct? Or yeah. Uh, well, we offer a course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Can you talk about that as far as what you do offer um, in that course? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, you know, we, we provide, we put everything in a course format uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean, we're also with the XP, so, you know, we are working on building our organization. And so uh, number one, uh, we offer that course. I mean, I hope I never, ever sell a course, right? But ultimately, uh, if we do that, it's because we gave it away. And that means that somebody partnered with us at eXp. So, you know, that's that's what works for us. It's like um, if somebody's looking for a change, maybe not exactly happy at their current brokerage or their team or whatever the situation may be, uh, maybe they don't have a lot of money or they are just looking for a change. You know, then everything we offer, we provide at no charge. Uh, you know, they get into, um, you know, if they want to join us. If not, we understand people are happy to stay where they're at, or maybe they've been with their brokerage for 20 years. They don't want to change. They just feel like they're not learning anything new. Then they can purchase a course and run through it. It teaches them everything that we did A to Z and uh, we didn't leave anything out of it. Uh, but also uh, for people that join us, you know, you know, with eXp, the course provides a baseline. It provides the, the education and everything so that I don't have to teach every single person YouTube from scratch when they when they come on board. They can go through the course and then they have all of the knowledge I have and then I can just fill in the gaps for them. So, you know, it's it's really it's it's it, it functions and serves very many purposes, but the main ones are to give uh, you know, to to help me leverage my time so that I'm not teaching everybody the basics and fundamentals of YouTube. Uh, they can learn from that. Uh, and if they join us, they get it for free. If not, if they want to stay where they're at, no problem. We understand that they can purchase the course. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, definitely want to thank you for your time, man. Is there, um, because I always want to leave the realtor with some type of play that they can do some step-by-step -step that they can look at this podcast and implement immediately after. So, I guess, Levi, what do you have for the realtors as far as what type of play can they put into action when they're done viewing this podcast? Well, if you look right below, I don't know if this is on video or not. If it's not on video, then uh, yeah, go. they can go to therealagents.com, which is R-E-E-L, so two E's, therealagents.com. I mean, really, I think the path of least resistance is, I mean, that's mm -hmm. the whole point of the course. People think the course, the value in the course is the information. It is but it's mainly, it's the time saving. You know, the fact is, is that what it took me about seven months to figure a lot of this out. Now I'm still learning and I don't know everything, but it took me about seven months to really get everything under control. And that's what got put into the course. So the course saves you seven months. It condenses what it took me seven months into about seven to nine hours, you know, for, for someone to learn. So you can either take seven hours through the course or you can try to piece it all together uh, over the next seven months. It's very difficult to do, but it can be done. But otherwise, I mean, I honestly, if you're not going to do that, I mean, go check out our channel. I mean, really that's, that's the whole blueprint right there for you. So if you're looking to really copy something that you could do that, <laughs> that's the easiest way. If you don't have, uh, if you don't want to invest or make a change, look at our channel 
and look at all the video topics, study every aspect about the channel. And so, you know, otherwise you're going to have to piece it all together. Uh, you're going to have to watch channels like think media and, you know, um, you know, our channel, everything else, and try to build out your own plan. So you have a couple of options, but ultimately today, I mean, what you have to implement is, is really um, understanding what is, what do you want the goal to be to your channel? Um, what can you do? I mean, I could tell you videos to make. I mean, it's very simple pros and cons, cost of living, top neighborhoods, top suburbs, all those videos are, those will work pretty much in any market. But if you don't understand everything else that goes around them, those videos aren't going to go anywhere. So you need some sort of format, something to learn, something to understand. Uh, you know, like I said, yes, there's a million dollars worth of information in the course, but it's really the time that it saves you as well. So again, time is our most valuable asset and that's what it's going to give you back. So if you can take a shortcut, because I have a very simple formula for success. It's who's at the top, what are they doing? How did they get there? How can I model that? And then how can I uh, do better than them? Right? So it's like, I don't try to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, who already built the wheel? But can I, you know, look at their wheel? Can I understand how they got there? Can I model making a wheel like theirs? But then how can I adjust it? Because I don't want to be a direct copycat or a ripoff or anything like that. I want to adjust it to fit my personality. And most of the time, I feel like I can figure out ways to do it better. And so, you know, but, you know, it took me seven months to figure all that stuff out, at least, you know, enough to be dangerous. <laughs> right. So, um, that, that's the thing is, I mean, you got to take action one way or another, study the platform, buy the YouTube books, YouTube secrets, YouTube formula, um, start digging in. You got to dive in. Awesome, man. Well, as they say, success leaves clues. And, uh, with Levi's channel living in Dallas, Texas, make sure you check it out. If you have not subscribed to his channel, um, you can check him out at the real R E E L agents.com. And um, again, brother, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate all the advice, um, all the gems that you poured into everybody that's listened to us, man. We really appreciate the time. All right. Thank you, man. Have a great day. All right. Take care.